I'm Ryan Nidell, host of 15 Minutes to Freedom, your daily action guide to getting shit done. Today's episode is entitled, Pinching What? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So in today's episode, I'm going to express and explain why not taking meaningful action in a short period of time can be detrimental to your success. So as many of you longtime listeners might realize, I traveled a ton for like two and a half or three years. After the, the failure of my merchant processing business, after the repossession of my truck and a bunch of crazy stuff where I had literally no money, like fat, flat broke. I can't say fat broke, flat broke with an F and an L and an AT instead of FAT. Either way, I was broke. And so I hustled. And custom clothing sales was a good hustle to me. I enjoyed it. I love it. I mean, I love to dress well and, and have a custom fitting suit on. I enjoyed the knowledge that I gained. I enjoyed the experiences and the people that I met and all aspects of it. It's a great time in life. One of the byproducts of that was I traveled a tremendous amount. Now, I would say a tremendous amount. I was putting in between seventy and 80,000 miles a year on my car. Now, you think about that. The average person in the U.S. right now drives in between thirteen and 15,000 miles a year. And I was putting 80,000 miles a year on a car. Like five times, six times, seven times the average usage that you're listening to right now. Seven times more than you're driving your car in a year. Like I was the type of guy that if you were a client and you were in Chicago and I live in Columbus, Ohio, as long as I could find one or two more clients, I would hop in my car and drive to Chicago to take care of you. Bring all my fabrics, get my suit on, hop in the car, make the five and a half hour drive, see you, see one or two of your friends, and then I would force myself to drive home because I didn't want to spend the money in a hotel room. I can't tell you how many different times I spent two, three hours sleeping in a rest stop or a gas station driving down Route 65 in Indiana or over across on 70 because there were a lot of customers in Chicago. So I drive back and forth. Not only were the customers in Chicago, there were customers in New York City. That's an eight and a half hour drive one way. Same type of deal. I'd force myself because I didn't want to spend the money. And a lot of times I couldn't spend the money. Like I physically didn't have an extra 250 bucks for a hotel room. I didn't want to lose the time out with my family. I wanted to get home. And so I would drive and drive and drive. And during this time period, of course, I was always involved in fitness, health, Shit, even then I was taking anabolic steroids, so it's not like it was like this altruistic way of operating. But I was eating and training and, and drinking water and doing all the things I should do. And so no matter what city I would go to, I would find a gym, I'd always have a change of clothes with me, and I would work out before I would leave that city. Because at least then I knew I got my workout in. And if I was on the road, I could eat healthy snacks along the way. Like I could stop at a rest stop and I get, you know, almonds and, you know, beef jerky and some things like that, and I could overhydrate myself. You know, because after those things are high salt content. Now, I don't believe that salt is bad for you inherently. I know across the board, many people would say, no, stay away from sodium. It's bad. You get, you know, all the, all the bad things that happen from too much sodium. In my experience, that's not really true. What makes it true is if you don't drink enough water and then you have, you know, imbalances in your hormones, there's all these things that happen as a byproduct. But if I increase my salt intake, all I would do is increase my water intake. So it's great. You know, I'm drinking water, I'm eating food, I'm traveling around the country, all in this nice 2000 and, gosh, I think 2005 Audi A8L that I bought with 110,000 miles and sold with 190. You know, I scraped together, I think it was 3,500 or four grand to buy this car. And so I got really familiar with, with the road, looking out the windshield. And in a deprived state of sleep, coming back from Chicago one day, I you know, made that round trip in the same day, you know, got up very early in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, hit the road, had to be in Chicago by, I'll say noon, met with clients from noon until five or six, trained from six until seven. Chicago is an hour behind Columbus. So it's really, you know, eight o'clock or so when I leave eight, eight thirty. then I make the five hour drive home. Ends up being almost a complete 24 hour day, including 10 hours on the road. Plus dealing with Chicago traffic, all that stuff. And then I'm driving home, and as I leave the city, of course, I have you know a protein shake and 
have a gallon of water in the passenger seat and probably some sort of meat snack, I'll call it, you know, something in the car to munch on. And I take off and I get outside the city. And after you get outside the city and you, you know, you get through the first part of Indiana, there's nothing until Indianapolis, really. Like Valparaiso University is the only thing on the stretch of road. And so as I'm driving, like I feel that feeling in my stomach. Like that feeling of like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to use the restroom. I'm gonna have to pee. I'm gonna have to urinate. However you want to say it. Like I know I'm gonna have to do this. I'm like all right, you know, I'm, I'm gonna push it. I literally, as soon as I start to feel that, I see a rest stop two miles ahead. And I'm like, nah, I don't want to stop. Like I got this. I think I'm gonna need gas by Valpo. I'll make this work. So I suck it up, you know, driving. Then I see a sign that says Valparaiso is like 65 miles ahead. I'm like, ooh, that is a questionable decision. Like, I'm at the point of no return. I certainly can't turn around. There's no exits. There's no stops. I've already passed the rest stop. I've been consuming water and protein shakes and salty foods since leaving Chicago, and I'm just driving. And I'm driving. And now my mind is fixated on how bad I have to use the restroom. Like, it's like I can't break it. Like, I turn up the music on the stereo. I roll down the window. Like, I mess around on my phone. I try to find somebody to call. Anything to distract me. But always running is like this subconscious operating system behind the scenes. is like, you have to pee. You have to pee. You have to pee. You have to pee. I'm like, man, this is pretty foolish. And so I, I remember seeing a sign. I'm going to estimate this. that it's, you know, I'm 25 miles away from Valparaiso. And I've stopped there, and there's gas stations, a safe place to stop. And it's, you know, I'll say 1030 at night, 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to make another 25 miles. Like, I have no idea. Even traveling at 75 or 80 miles an hour, that amount of time that it's going to take, the extra 15 or 20 minutes, I don't know how I find another 15 or 20 minutes of space in my bladder. And I can't. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to pee myself. Like, I'm convinced. And so in this, I get the incredibly bright idea. So I'm driving. Windows are up now. Radio's still blaring. That I'll drive with my right hand, and I will squeeze and pinch a part of my anatomy, use your imagination, to make it that I physically can't end up peeing myself. Like, if I had to, nothing's going to come out. Because I'm not at the point where I'm ready to throw in the towel. Like, I'm not giving up on this quest. But I'm like, there's, I'm, I'm going to pee myself. And so I'm pinching myself. Like, I'm pinching myself very hard. It's very aggressive. So I'm doing anything I can to, again, not soil the trousers I have on, not pee all over the car. Like, I'm a grown man. I'm 30, probably 32 at this point. I don't need to pee myself. Like, I'm better than this. And all along, I'm, I'm like, cursing myself that I had the chance it wasn't like I'm on this barren stretch of road that's not safe with nowhere to pull off on, and I didn't ever pass a rest stop. Like I passed one, and I made the conscious decision to not do something about it. And so I'm continuing to pinch myself, and I'm continuing to pinch myself, and I get to the rest stop, and I pull in, and there's like this overwhelming sense of like, holy shit, I actually made it. Like there's relief. But relief and release end up going almost hand in hand. So as I go to open the car door, I'm pinching myself, and I go to stand up, and I'm still like holding, you know, that part of my body, like very, very, very firmly. And I'm like, now that I've shifted my body position, now that I'm standing up, now that I've applied pressure in different places, now that my grip has changed on, you know, myself, I'm realizing I'm gonna lose it. And this is not, I'm not. I have to walk inside. I have to walk through like a grocery store part of this gas station. The restrooms passed a restaurant and it passed, it's all the way in the back right hand corner. I'm like, I don't know, I, I can't like run. If I run, there's no chance because I'm definitely going to pee myself. And so I'm like waddling into this, this store, like pinching, waddling, like people just looking at me like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And I, I can't even say I care. Like I'm doing everything I can not to pee myself. And I get in and I open the door and like I can feel just a little bit. It doesn't matter that I'm pinching. Like I can feel a little urine come out of me. And I'm, I'm losing it. I'm losing grip on myself. I'm losing the ability to hold my, you know, hold my, my bladder. And I can feel the outside of my pants get just a little bit wet. I'm like, Jesus, 
I've made it all this way. Like, I made it 60 plus miles. I fought the good fight. I'm inside the freaking gas station. And now I'm going to pee myself. Like, this is what this comes down to. This. So now I don't even care. Like I, I'm just like, screw it. I can see the restroom. I can see the sign in the corner. Still holding myself with my left hand. And I start sprinting through this gas station. 10.30 at night. For those of you that haven't traveled this stretch of road, like 10.30, 11, 12 at night, it's a whole different environment. Like Families are off the road. It's truck drivers. It's some different... Um, just different type of people. You know, you don't see you don't see a bunch of families and, and, and people on the road at that time. And so some of these people travel enough that they know exactly what I'm doing. And the other group of people are staring at me like I have four heads. Like I look ridiculous. So imagine this. I'm in a three-piece suit. The jacket's left in the car. So I have a vest on. I have a tie on. Tie's probably a little untied. I've got one hand holding my, my genitalia. I'm sprinting through the store with leather sold shoes on, so I'm like clopping, like they're they're making this clopping noise on the tile, and I'm running into the bathroom. And as I get in the bathroom, fortunately the stalls are like the urinals are open. But as I'm trying to undo my pants, like I have to remove my hand, like I have to switch positions. And as I move my hand, all hell breaks loose. They just the, the game over. The back pressure is released, and I'm doing as I'm unzipping my pants and trying to, you know, maneuver underwear and all that stuff. And there's, uh, I feel like, two or three seconds where I'm just peeing on myself. Like it's just happening. And of course, I continue to pee in, in the in the urinal. And I'm laughing here because I literally, for the first time that I can ever remember, I have Kurt that spun his chair around, and I can see his body shaking from laughing at this story. So hopefully, you're getting a chuckle out of this yourself because there's a moral to this story. And so I go, like, and completely relieve myself. I've had enough water that everything is clear. I'm like, all right, what am I going to do now? So I, I go over to the sink, and now, like, I don't want to smell like pee. So I'm like, all right, I can at least wash my pants off, kind of. Like, I can splash water from the sink and get some soap, and I can, like, wash off my crotch area. And admittedly doing that, it might make my pants not smell so bad. It might, and I don't know that they smelled, but, like, I, I certainly was conscious of what was going on. And so I'm washing it off, but now I have this wet spot that covers from really knee to knee on both sides up across the vest from washing off my pants. Now, mind you, everybody saw me sprinting through the gas station holding myself. Like everybody knows, in theory, what I was doing. And I come out, and there is, it looks like I've just completely pissed myself everywhere. And part of it I, I had. Like certainly, I, no shame in this game, I didn't get everything out of the, out of the holster quick enough. And so I'm walking through the, the gas station. I tried to dry myself off. It wasn't like I was you know, ridiculous about it, but you can't dry off wool that quick in that sort of environment. I just want to get home. And so with my head held high, my head held high, I walk through the gas station, you know, nod, say hello to people, walk out, hop in my car, fill it up with gas, of course, and go about my merry way. And the rest of the way home, I'm literally like just beside myself that I didn't do the simple thing of just pulling off and using the restroom when I had the opportunity. And like it, sure, I would have lost another 15 minutes of travel time because I would have had to stop twice. And that was ultimately what was rattling through my brain when I didn't make that decision. It's like I can condense time down. I can wait and I can wrap everything up at one time, gas and restroom. But I wasn't able to at all. It just didn't work that way. And it's like, how many other places in my life am I not taking the right path at the right time? Like here was something so simple. Like I literally, okay, I have to use the restroom. I see a sign rest stop two, two miles ahead. I have to drive past the rest stop, and I decide not to stop and use it. That is a conscious decision because I thought that I could outlast it. I thought I could wait. It's like, man, I bet there's hundreds of other aspects of my life now that I look back where I could have just forged forward and done, done the work right away. I could have not delayed the inevitable. Like, it was inevitable. I was going to have to use the restroom. It wasn't going to magically disappear. And in that, the end result by not doing it quickly and efficiently was I peed myself. Just a little bit. Nonetheless, it still counts. Man, and here goes Kurt, Kurt shaking again. Yeah, this is unedited. This is real stuff in here. 
And so all the different aspects in life where this was applicable, like where I wasn't preparing to go to the gym in the morning, like I was just kind of haphazard, haphazardly just going th- through the motions. Like I wasn't planning my next day the night before. And all these things become relevant because it all is a lesson to be garnished from the fact of just not pulling off and taking the, the immediate path of using the restroom. And so where in your life right now should you just be taking action right now that you're delaying something? The body part's easy to me. Maybe you want to change the composition of your body. You're not happy with the amount of muscle or lack thereof that you have or the amount of body fat you have or overaccumulation thereof. And instead of going to the gym and doing something about it, you're talking yourself out of it. You're not taking immediate and impactful action. Maybe it's in your relationship. Maybe you know that the relationship you're in right now isn't healthy, but you're waiting for it to hopefully get better instead of having some tough conversations or a meaningful and quick exit from the relationship to make room for the next one that's going to come. Or maybe it's in your business. You know, you're working for somebody else, you're an entrepreneur, you're in somebody's company, and ultimately you don't enjoy being there. You hate going to work every day. But instead of taking an immediate and impactful action to either better that situation or find a new situation to work within, you go through the drudgery of heading to the office every day. What I found is when you quit pinching it and you start taking massive action day over day, you're able to get shit done.